When you walk into a supermarket, you are often bombarded with food choices. There's just so many. One of the toughest decisions to make is whether to buy organic. Organic foods are often twice as expensive compared to their conventional counterparts, but the notion is that you are getting better quality food for that price. Is it really worth it though to buy this organic apple which traveled all the way from California? Or should you go with a conventional apple grown here in New York? commercial farms, you know, a lot of this stuff comes in from California, so you've got at least three days getting across the country, and usually it sits in a warehouse somewhere. Organic has become a trendy concept, and it's sweeping through the produce world, making up the highest percentage of organic purchases. Such foods are often thought as natural, healthy, and pesticide-free. But is this true? Just because the pesticides were down there and the, that type of thing, they're healthier. Nutrient value, probably. It's about um, like knowing where your food's from and also having food that doesn't have the inputs of, of chemicals and fertilizers and all these things that are polluting our planet and our bodies. National statistics show 70% of people say they buy organic because they believe it is healthier. The next reason was to avoid pesticides there is no statistically significant difference in the nutrient content of organic foods versus non-organic foods. Robert Parker is a professor in the Division of Nutritional Science at Cornell University. He agreed with a recent Stanford University study that found organic foods are not safer or more nutritious than conventional foods. Current evidence suggests that it doesn't make any difference with respect to health. You may wonder though, with over 20,000 pesticides allowed on the conventional foods that we eat every day, are these fruits and veggies really safe? Well, the EPA says they're safe enough to put into our food system. One of the problems with trying to answer this question is foods don't have just one pesticide on them. All of these pesticides are individually tested. They're not tested together and their interactions together. A pesticide, as defined by the Environmental Protection Agency, is any substance or mixture intended for preventing, destroying, repelling, or mitigating any pests. But it's amazing that there's a, a, a fair amount of people that think organic means no spray, which is not true. Organic foods are produced with minimal inputs. For the most part, this means without synthetic chemicals or food additives. Contrary to popular belief, organic doesn't mean pesticide-free and the number of chemicals allowed in organic foods has tripled in the last decade. The real threat to the survival of man is biological, in the shape of hordes of insects. But one woman challenged the way we looked at chemicals and nature, giving us a new vision of the future. Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. In the 1970s, books like The Silent Spring raised concerns about the effects pesticides might have on health and the environment. People took a stand against large-scale conventional farming and pushed for local foods. Later, when the Organic Foods Production Act of 1990 was passed, it created the National Organic Program, setting uniform standards for organic certification. But farmers didn't have to comply with the standards until 2002. As more multinational farmers began to join the organic industry, the cost of organic certification went up, putting a heavy burden on small farmers. I got a $750 check to uh, reimburse me for part of my certification fees. Uh, of course, the cost of my certification for our farm went up about $750 when the United States started accrediting, accrediting uh, the, the certifiers. The high fees associated with organic certification have led many small farmers to discontinue their accreditation or even begin the process. Years ago I did certify, but with the federal standards they made the paperwork much more nasty and uh, it also uh, it costs a fair amount of money to do it. There are four steps to become certified organic. First, a farm must choose an accredited organic certifier. A list of appropriate private and government agencies can be found on the USDA website. Second, a farmer must submit an application and an organic system plan to their chosen certification agency. This includes a history of land uses, pesticide management plans, 
product labeling, and other requirements. Third, the organic certifier reviews the farmer's application and the organic system plan. Fourth, the certifier assigns a qualified organic inspector to evaluate the farm. Then comes the final review, which checks that the farm is in full compliance. If a farmer meets all the requirements, they can stamp on that organic label. A lot of these organic companies are, are really run by the big companies that also have GMO products and support, you know, genetically mod. So on one hand, these companies are, are producing and selling organic foods, and on the other, they're selling genetically modified products. The number of non-organic chemicals permitted in organic foods has grown from 77 in 2002 to 250 today. This rate is 15 times higher than the increase seen in chemicals allowed on conventional foods. Heinz, Cargill, General Mills, and Kellogg's are just a few of the big food businesses that control their organic industry now. These companies may play a role in the recent addition of non-organic chemicals. There are working groups, and the working groups do the the homework for the agencies and the working groups can recommend something or not and either FDA or some federal agency buys into it depending how they can lobby it. Professor Geza Herazdina has taught plant science at Cornell University for over 40 years. He explained the lobbyists for these big companies ensure that such chemicals did not have to be labeled. The addition of chemicals and food additives, like carrageenan, hit a tipping point for some organic advocates. The Cornucopia Institute called it the organic Watergate, saying the USDA stacked the National Organic Standards Board with agribusiness executives that abandoned the interests of consumers. It's business. If it's business, it's profit generating. The bigger the profit, the better the business. Botanical pesticides, also known as BTs, are among the chemicals allowed in organic foods. These substances are natural because they are derived from plants. Natural substances could be just as harmful as synthesized chemicals. So a chemical is a chemical. You know, whether it comes from a plant or whether it comes from a company, if it's toxic, it is toxic. Rotenone is a common chemical allowed in organic produce that has been linked with Parkinson's disease and is classified by the World Health Organization as mildly hazardous. In some cases, organic and conventional farming uses the same pesticides. We do use some BTs, yep, we certainly do, especially more so in, in cabbage because there's more products available um, for that. Turk Farms is the third largest conventional vegetable farm in New York. The co-owner said Depel and Gemstar are two common botanical pesticides they use. Even though organics can use pesticides, studies show there's less pesticide residues on organic foods than conventional. Most organic farmers are advised to only use additional chemicals when absolutely necessary. But there is a lack of information on long-term effects of many chemicals used. There are no long-term studies examining the actual risk associated with exposure to organically grown foods versus conventionally grown foods to specifically examine whether or not those differences in insecticide or or pesticide exposure translates into any meaningful uh, difference in risk for some chronic disease. Right? Those studies simply haven't been done. Uh, you know, they would be very expensive, they would take literally decades. In addition, genetically modified organisms, also known as GMOs, are used extensively on non-organic foods. Genetically modified foods have only been around for the last 15 years. With uh, the, the GMOs, genetically modified foods, you are losing a single gene and either you crank it up to produce more of it, more of its product, or you turn the switch and turn it off. So it, is, it is a single effect versus a uh, number of other effects. You may be seeing one thing, uh, for example, if you want to have a, a redder apple, that the apple may be redder, but you don't know the pliotrophic, pliotrophic effect. So far, conventional farmers see that the benefits of GMOs outweigh the risks. A human can digest proteins, or our bodies are, are um, set, made to digest proteins. In these GMO varieties that they've made, they realize that a worm's, uh, a worm's body is not able to digest protein, so all of these varieties do, they emit proteins that as the worm eats it, it's like swallowing glass. 
Jason said that in the South, the humid climate forces farmers to spray pesticides every day. But by genetically modifying foods, they only have to spray once or twice a week. The goal of this process is to get the foods perfectly ripe when they hit the shelves. The definition of ripe is not a scientific definition. It's, it's, the, the, the term ripe refers to optimal condition as it's defined by a, the consumer. They're picking through the stuff and they're looking for something that looks perfect. That has absolutely nothing to do with what it tastes like or how nutritious it is. But people have just been trained to think that, you know, everything has to be perfect. You know, let's face it, fruits and vegetables, they're not made in a factory. They're, they're grown, you know, they're natural things. And, and their, you know, their appearance and the way they taste don't necessarily have anything to do with each other. There are three basic types of farmers. Conventional, those who are allowed to use pesticides, GMOs, and other chemicals. Certified organic, who cannot use most synthesized chemicals. And hybrid, who use a combination of processes. Gordon Gallup of Silver Queen Farms uses integrative methods to deal with pest management. We do all the things that organic farmers do, but we also do some things that conventional farmers do. Little Tree Orchards is a local farm in Newfield, New York, that isn't certified organic, but strives for minimal pesticide use. You know, we don't do organic, but we do a very low spray, and I use a lot of IPM, Integrated Pest Management. I use a combination of synthetics and organics, and I do that for a reason, is to keep the bugs guessing. I like to go local because it's a less travel time. I don't necessarily care if they're certified or not. I know it's a long process that not everyone can afford. What really matters is knowing where your food comes from. When you pick up food in the grocery store, it's almost impossible to know what chemicals were used on it and how long it's been sitting. But if you buy from the local farmer, you can ask such questions. I think the Ithaca community has really been aware of local. They're, they're definitely moving more to local people. They like the, uh, the idea of it. They like supporting local agriculture. There's a large number of CSAs. Local supports a community. It, 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 it goes to your neighbors. It supports your community in building up um, social networks. People that are looking at that farmer, they're asking him a direct question. You know, what, do you, how, what are your growing practices? Are you sustainable? Are you organic? Are you non-organic? You know, what is your spray program? You, you cannot ask a can or you cannot ask a, a bunch of radishes. <laughs> what, what did you have? What was paid on you? You're not going to get anything from them, but you get feedback from the farmer, of course. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know sprays. You know, if I give them a name, a chemical name, they may not know it. But I, I do that, I ask them that they want to know the name, and I'll give them the name and it says, go look it up online. Small farmers have to be very, very good stewards of their farms because their livelihood is there. They're not paid by somebody else. They have to, they have to keep everything healthy. 